And I want to say good afternoon to the rest of the sisters and brothers that are watching on the internet. And as always, I am glad to stand before you. And uh, I am glad that they are, because sisters and brothers, quiet as it kept, Israel is still the priest of God. We were commissioned with the task of teaching and bringing all of the sons of Adam back to God that fell off the vine in the Garden of Eden. Because we have to understand one thing. God is a God of all people. All that on this planet was created by God. He wants to save them all. But the whole planet, the whole creation fell off the vine and he chose them a people. And that people happened to be Israel. He chose us to bring all of the sons and daughters back to him. Sometimes some of my sisters and brothers, some of my brothers have gotten confused in that. But still, our jobs prevail. Since 7 AD, sisters and brothers, when the last known Israelites under the, under the hand of Judah was taken out by Titus, the Roman general, the word of God have been taken off the table and set aside. The reason is, sisters and brothers, because the Lord says he showed his word to Israel and he's done that to no other people. So when we lost sight on self, God, and duty, the whole world went into ignorance. Now what we have, sisters and brothers, is called Roman Christianity all over the world. Why Roman Christianity? Because I say all the time, all the original Christians was Israelites. But nobody want to grab that is because the world have separated Israel from Jesus the Messiah. He is the anointed one. He is the Messiah or either the Christ. That's where Christian came from. But being that the world have messed it up, everybody have run away from it. And I say to all my Hebrew brothers, no, let's claim it. Let's bring it back. We put it out there. Let's sanitize it and put it on the table the right way. This, sisters and brothers, we have to do. We were commissioned to do this. Now, we're going to look at a thing here, sisters and brothers. You know, people always talk about the Trinity and God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. That, sisters and brothers, is an error in teaching. Sure, we have one that became the Father and one that became the Son, and one that's called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Truth, it's not, nothing but an angel. And we're going to show you that. Because God have a protocol. His protocol is the one that became the father, he gave it to the son. The son gave it to Israel, and Israel is supposed to give it to all of the rest of the sons of Adam. That is the protocol. And it has not been broken from the time that the Lord set it up until this day. So we're going to deal with this spirit of truth. He even have a name. The title of this lesson is Gabriel, the spirit of truth, the messenger of God. 
Gabriel, the spirit of truth, the messenger of God. Gabriel is the messenger that brings it to Israel, and we takes it, and we are the messengers that take it to the rest of the sons of Adam, sisters and brothers. So we're going to show you how the Lord operate. He always operated through angels, sisters and brothers. Even when he reached out and touched Moses, let's see how he did it. Let's go into Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus chapter 3. Because we're going to take our time and we're going to walk through this thing, sisters and brothers. Because the problem with us, we don't read. And when people tell me, well, you know, only thing we have in English, I say, I don't have no problem with that. I don't speak no other language. But then God told me in Isaiah, the 28th chapter, he said, with a stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to this people. How is it that he expects his messenger to take his message to the rest of the sons of Adam if we can't understand what he's talking about? God said, another tongue. That's why I tell people they should go in the second chapter of Acts and look at that Pentecost system, brother. And look at all these Hebrews from all over the world. But they all spoke the language of the nation that they were scattered in. But they had to go there. They had to be taught. Why? Because we have to take care of God's business, sister and brother. So we're going to start this in uh, Exodus, the third chapter, and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Uh -huh. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Uh -huh. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now look, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses in a, in, in a burning bush. You know, we show you on Pentecost all the different ways that these angels reach out and touch you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if God tell them, tell them to be dramatic. or uh, They choose to be dramatic as long as they bring the message. That's right. So this guy here was in a burning bush. The angel of the Lord was, sisters and brothers. Now go ahead and read. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. Uh -huh. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Wait a minute. I thought the angel was in the bush. God. Now what you going to tell me? God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. He did, sisters and brothers, but by the mouth of the angel. So these things, we must understand the protocol. If you don't understand the protocol, then you don't understand nothing. Go ahead and read. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Uh-huh. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where, whereon thou standest is holy ground. Go ahead. Moreover, he said, I'm the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And he is the same God even this day. Go ahead and read. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Uh-huh. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. Uh-huh. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. Now look, Egypt, sisters and brothers, are our first captives. In fact, Egypt... Out of one, the people that we that look just like us tried to terminate the whole nation of Israel. How did they try to do that, brother boy? By telling the midwives when the when the Hebrew, Hebrew women have children, if it's a girl, save her alive. If it's a male, kill it. If you kill the male, you kill the nation because the man carried the seed. And now we have brothers running around talking about Egyptologists. Look, brother, that was your first captain. And he go he, and he taken you. He gone. He wanted to go further than anybody else. Everybody else had, that have us beat us some, hung a few, castrated a few, but they didn't want to kill us all. Egypt wanted to terminate the whole nation, sisters and brothers. That's a big task, isn't it? So next time, brothers run to you, tell me Egypt. Say, hey, that's your first captain, Israel. Go ahead and read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. To bring them out, out, of the, out of that land unto a good land in a law. Uh -huh. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Uh -huh. Now therefore behold, the, ch the cry of the children of Israel is come, up, come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. He said, now look, I'm going to come down and I'm going to deliver them. And give, give, and turn, give them the... The land of Canaan. That's Ham's four sons, sisters and brothers. 
So I come down to do this. Now let's go into his, uh, Exodus the 23rd chapter. Exodus chapter 23. Because sisters and brothers, it is time for us to read the Bible and stop telling stories. The Bible is our history and it's the history of the world, sisters and brothers. If, you want, if you're going to pay some attention to history, do it according to the book. Exodus 23 and verse 20. Now he's telling you how he's going to do this thing. 23 and 20. Okay, read it. Behold, I sent an angel before thee uh -huh. to keep thee in the way Go ahead. and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. He said, I'm going to send an angel before you to keep you straight and I'm going to bring you into the place that I prepared for you. Go ahead and read. Beware of him uh -huh. and obey his voice. Provoke him not, uh -huh. for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. He said, now I want you to beware of this guy. Don't provoke him because he will not pardon your sins because my name is in him. He come in the name of the Lord, sister and brother. So he's going to do exactly what he is told. He got his marching orders. And he can't be persuaded. Because he was there when Satan went contrary. He saw what happened to him. He don't want that to happen to him. Go ahead and read. But if thou shalt indeed, indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Pay attention to what it said. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Because the words come from the Lord. The angel's just like a parrot. He ain't going to say nothing but what he hear. Go ahead and read. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy. Uh-huh. And an adversary unto thine adversary. Go ahead. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Now this is the Lord says he's going to do this. But he's going to do it by the hand of this angel. Skip down to verse 31. Verse 31 and go ahead. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines. Uh -huh. And from the desert unto the river. Go ahead. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand. And thou shalt drive them out before thee. Now the Lord said so he's going to come in. And he's going to deliver all of these seven nations sisters and brothers. In the hand of Israel. And he said I want you to drive them all out. I don't want you to leave any. Because if you leave any. They're going to introduce their gods to you. And now you're going to run in trouble with me. But go ahead and read. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Don't make no covenant with them. Nor with their God. Nor with their God. Go ahead. They shall not dwell in thy land. Uh-huh. Lest they make thee sin against me. Go ahead. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. See, that's why I lost it now. I don't want you to leave them there. Because what's going to happen is they're going to persuade you to serve their gods. And now you're going to be in trouble with me. So drive them out. See, people don't understand. I hear people on, oh, brother boy, you mean God wanted them to kill all the women, children, and the babies? Because if he don't, he's going to have to kill you for not doing it. It's just like cutting the cancer out of a sick body, sister and brother. Nobody want to be cut on, but if you don't, you can die, can't you? But let's see if Israel was obedient. Let's go into Judges, the first chapter. Let's see if we can take some orders. Then, and once we see that, we might find out the source of our problems. Understand? Because if our problems came up on us, and when our problems shut us down, then that shut the world down. That's why the world is so messed up, sister and brother. Every nation have their own religion. Uh-uh. Yeah, but the whole world is supposed to have one way of serving God. And all of them are supposed to serve the same God. Last time I looked, I saw Adam and Eve. And the last time I saw the one that was left after the flood that come over on the boat was Noah and his son. I hear Israelites say, well, you know, some other people come over there. I put the Bible on the table and said, bring them to me. If you can't bring them to me out of this, then I don't recognize them. You understand? Because we are children of slaves. We can only read what's been presented to us. And I believe that the God of Israel is powerful enough to reach his people and get us straight no matter where we are and what nation or what language we speak. If you can't believe that, then you are in trouble. Now let's see what Israel did. Judges, the first chapter, and let's start reading at verse 28. 1 and verse 28. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass 
when Israel was strong, that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Wait a minute. The Lord didn't tell them to do that, didn't he? You know, tribute is, I'll let y'all live if you bring me a, 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 a amount of fruit, amount of food. And in other words, you're going to make them supply you because you're too lazy to go out and do your own farming. So I'm going to let y'all live if you pay tribute to me. Go ahead and read. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gazar. Uh-huh. But the Canaanites dwelt in Gazar among them. Go ahead. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalon. Uh -huh. But the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributary. Wait a minute. Look like ain't nobody listening to God, isn't it? <laughs> Look like nobody drove nobody out, sisters and brothers. Everybody was there. Skip down and read verse 35. Go ahead. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Herez and Ijalon and in Shalbim, yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed so that they became tributary. So did we do what the Lord said? Uh -uh. Then he said, go in there and drive them all out. Let nobody stay among you. Because if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Israel did not obey God at all. That's why I tell my brothers, I said, when you want to look at your condition, go back and look at what your fathers did. Maybe you've been focusing on the wrong one. Now let's go. Now once Israel disobeyed, let's go right into the second chapter of Judges and see what happened. Judges 2, Judges 2 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochy uh -huh. and said, I made you to go out of Egypt and and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. Uh -huh. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Ain't that something? So now this angel that the Lord sent to bring Israel in that land. Now once Israel had got in the land, now they did everything contrary. So this angel came up and said, look, he sound like it's God talking, don't you? Because he speaks for God, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. He said, look, I called you to come up out of Egypt. I'm the one that uh, swear unto your father and gave him this land. I told you not to make any kind of league or no kind of covenant with these people, but you didn't listen. Why have you not done this? Go ahead and read. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. So I ain't going to drive them out. Look, I told you what to do. Now, you're going to have to live with them. Go ahead and read. But they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. Uh -huh. And it came to pass, when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, Go ahead. that the people lifted up their voice and wept. Ain't that something? Now, we famous for that. We disobey and don't pay no attention to God. And when the drama fall, now we want to cry. It's too late now. I tell people all the time, and they say, well, I pray that the Lord will have mercy on me. I say, he had mercy on you. He told you in his word what to do. You didn't do it. You ignored his mercy. I don't want the mercy where you're going to come and patch me up after I've been hit in the head. I want the mercy to tell me, don't go around the corner because the guy around there with a bat that hitting people in the head. <laughs> so I won't go around there. That is the mercy I'm looking for. That's right. So I can avoid the drama. So this angel, we're going to see whatever, the, what else this, this angel was called. Let's go, was called. Let's go into Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. Isaiah ch chapter 63. Because we love to do wrong. And when the drama draw, fall, we want to cry and mourn and point the finger at everybody else. Yeah, y'all did this to me. Lord told Israel, you're going to go into captivity. You're going to go by ship. You're going to be sold as male and female slaves. You're going to be oppressed. The Lord told Israel that when we was in the wilderness. Now when we go and this happened to us, you mad at the people that's enslaving us and whipping us. Somebody had to do it because God said it's going to happen. Now they're making a debt that they got to pay because of your disobedience. He said, my angel, he's going to take you. He's going to do everything you want. But let's see. But he said, obey him, didn't he? That's right. Do what he said, because he will not forgive your sin. Let's see what the Lord said about this people, so he delivered us. Let's do it at verse 7. We're going to start at verse 7. Isaiah 63, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. 
Okay, go ahead. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel. Go ahead. Which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercy. He's I will mention his kindness because the Lord hath been well to us, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And according to the multitude of his loving kindness. Uh-huh. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. Boy, so he every time I read that, I have to lay. Surely they are my people and children that will not lie. Israel lied to drop. He lied more than this president we got. <laughs> people that will not lie. Go ahead and read. So he was their savior. And all their affliction, he was afflicted. And all their affliction, uh, on all their uh, affliction, he was afflicted. Go ahead and read. And the angel of his presence saved them. And the angel of his presence saved them. We're going to come back here. Let's see. What this angel of his presence is called, sisters and brothers. Keep your spot here. Let's go into Luke, the first chapter. That's why the Lord said in Isaiah, the eighth chapter, the law in the testimony, the law in the testimony. If they speak not according to that, there's no light, which means no truth in them. You have to use both of these books, sisters and brothers, so you can understand what is going on. Luke, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 11. Luke chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 11. This is when John the uh, Baptist's father, he was a, Le a, a Levitical priest. Mm -hmm. Because the Levites still was in charge until Jesus died on the cross, sister and brother. Verse 11, go ahead. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Uh-huh. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. See, this Zacharias' job was to go in there and light the candles, sister and brother. That was his job. He was a Le Levitical priest. And so while he was in there, in there doing his job, angel appeared to him, standing by the altar. Go ahead. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, uh -huh. for thy prayers heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So he told Zechariah, look, don't be afraid. The Lord has heard your prayer. Apparently the guy been praying for a son or a child and didn't get one. He said, so the Lord has heard your prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, your wife going to have a, a, have a son, and you're going to call his name John. That's the one they called John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 18, and let's see what Zechariah said. Because he figured, hey, I'm an old man. Go ahead and read. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? Uh -huh. For I'm an old man, uh -huh. and my wife well stricken in years. In other words, he didn't believe this, kid, this angel. You know, hey, I'm an old man. My wife is well stricken. Ain't no more baby making in us. But what were you praying for then? But then look what the angel said to him. Go ahead and read. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel. I am Gabriel. That stand in the presence of God. That stand in the presence of God. Didn't the, didn't the Lord, the book said, the angel of his presence right. delivered them? That's right. Because this cat's right here. He gave him the order. He go and bring the message. Right. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. Go ahead and read. And I'm sent to speak unto thee. Uh -huh. And to show thee these glad tidings. And I was sent to tell you that you was going to have this baby. Now, because you won't believe me, he told you, don't vex this guy. Go ahead and read. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Because if angels was up, they could do that to you. God gave them the latitude. He said, now I'm going to tell you something. Because you didn't believe me, you ain't going to say another word until a child is born. Now, when John the Baptist... His wife got, his, his mother got pregnant with him. And when he was born, they said, she said, they asked the name, said, what you going to name him? John. They said, ain't nobody in Israel named John. Mm -hmm. Because Israel named somebody always in that lineage. And like the apostle Paul, he was Saul. He was a Benjamite. He was named after the first king of Israel. So they said, why John? So they asked him. That's why the old name, like, it gets, this is Joseph. Had to say Joseph, the son of Zechariah, the son of Malachi, because you had so many Joseph. Until every time you name a Joseph, you had to run the whole family tree before you know whose son he is. 
You couldn't say Jones because Israel, everybody was the whole nation's last name. And after the thousand year millennium period, all the sons of Adam will be adopted and everybody will have the name of Israel. That's the Lord's name, sister and brother. That's why I say you're polluting my holy name. So now because of that, you're going to be dumb. And when they asked him, when his wife said, we're going to name him Elizabeth, uh, John, they looked at John, at, at, uh, 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 at Zachariah, said, what, go, what are we going to name him? He said, give me a pen, a pen and piece of paper. And he wrote down John. Then the Lord opened his mouth. That's because the angel said, because you won't believe me. God told you to listen to this guy. Now let's go into, back to Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. I told you to keep your spot here. Isaiah 63, because we're going to look at this, sisters and brothers, and show you how that the world have gone blind because the real priests have been out of action. And some of them back in action, and we still, ain't, we still kind of blind too, but we're going to get there. Isaiah 63, and we're going to read one verse, verse 10, 63 and 10. Okay, go ahead. But they rebelled. And vexed his Holy Spirit. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. We thought it was dealing with the angel. Why are we talking Holy Spirit here? Because every, we're going to show you that the angels are spirit. And everyone that didn't follow Satan is holy. That's why people, when you say Holy Spirit, you have to be definitive, sisters and brothers. Because people throw Holy Spirit on the table. If I don't know nothing about it, I'm going to put the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit on the table. That'll fix everything. No, it won't. If you don't know what context you're using in. Because God is a spirit. All angels are spirit. We can show you what it says. Jesus said the words that I speak are spirit. The thoughts of the mind I can show you the spirit. I can even show you that the breath that you breathe is called the spirit in your nostril. So when you use Holy Spirit, you have to be definitive. So what is this Holy Spirit? It represented the one that the Lord sent before him. Therefore, but they rebel and they vex his Holy Spirit. Or I could have said his holy angel. Go ahead. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. Uh -huh. And he fought against them. And what did that angel come up from Gilgal? So I told you to do all this stuff. I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. I'm the one that brought, made a covenant with you. And I'm the one that told you not to make a covenant with these people. But you didn't listen. Why? Because he was vexed, sisters and brothers. Well, another word you can use is grieve. You understand? Now, Paul gave some good advice, and we're going to show you what he said about that. Let's go into Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I got a lot of brothers kick against Paul, lying Paul. Paul can tell you what tribe he come out of. He tell you he was circumcised the eight day old. He can show you that he come from the stock of Israel. We have to be real creative to come up with all that, don't we? I happen to believe that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can keep his word straight no matter who says it, sisters and brothers. It's just like we're looking at what's going on in the world right now. Everybody's excited and want going on talking about this president we have and what Russia is doing and, and not paying any attention that everybody is getting their house in order. Everything is online, sisters and brothers. This is exciting time. Well, we're going to see this thing come to end. The thing is where you going to be. That's what counts. Ephesians 4th chapter and verse 29. We're going to start reading at verse 29. We're going to run something at you. Go ahead and read. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Uh-huh. But that which is good to the use of edifying. Now let's let no communication corrupt. proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for edifying. In other words, be able to expand somebody, teach somebody, enlarge somebody's mind. Go ahead and read. That it may minister grace unto the hearer. Uh-huh. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Uh-huh. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are sealed in the day of redemption. This guy is going to keep you. But people read this and they think about something inside of you. The only spirit that go inside of you, sisters and brothers, is the word of God. But this guy here, he said, don't grieve. Let me show you what I'm saying. By your corrupt communication and misbehavior. Let's go in the Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, and run this a little bit. Ecclesiastes chapter five. Because the Lord put all this here, and he wants us to read this, but we don't. A lot of people, when I read the Bible, they get a good feeling. You better read the Bible to get some understanding. 
Because if you don't, you're going to have a bad feeling at the time of punishment. This is some serious business, sister and brother. That's why the Lord has brought the world to the Israel of God. I do mean the world, sister and brother. If I named all the people that were online right now on this planet, we sh I'd still be naming. Because the people recognize that the truth is still with Israel, sister and brother. Ecclesiastes 3, 5, brother. Ecclesiastes 5, and read verse 2. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 2. This is actually a continuation from what we just got through reading in Ephesians. Verse 2. Go ahead and read it. Be not rash with thy mouth. Be not rash with your mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. And don't be quick to run your mouth before God now. Remember this now. Don't be quick to utter anything before God. Because look. This guy is going to hold this against your sisters and brothers. You know what rash with your mouth is? Don't run your mouth if you don't know what you are talking about. Read that again. <laughs> Go ahead. Be not rash with thy mouth. Uh huh. And let not thine heart be hasty Go ahead. to utter anything before God. Go ahead. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. So, if you don't know what you're talking about, don't say nothing. Because when you put it out of your mouth, you own it. Skip down to verse 6 and read. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. And tell you know, we had a street, had a street saying, you know, don't let your mouth write a check that you know what else can't cash. So this is what the Lord is telling you right now. Suffer not your mouth. To write a check you can't cash. Right. Go ahead and read. Neither say thou before the angel uh -huh. that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hand? Is, and, and don't turn around and tell the angel, oh, I made an error. I made a mistake. Lord told you, you better obey this guy. He ain't going to forgive you. So don't talk around, oh, I made a mistake. He said, no, this cat ain't going to listen to you. Why should your works be destroyed? I can show you in another lesson, not only would your works be destroyed, that same angel will destroy you. Because he got his marching orders, sisters and brothers. That's why I say, watch what you say. Watch what you promise God. That if I tell all the young men, Hebrews, young Hebrews coming to the word of God, they're all full of zeal. The first thing they want to do is make the vow of a Nazarite. I said, why? Why is it that you are putting yourself in harm's way by making a vow that you got to keep? Especially, they don't even know about it. If you're going to have a vow of a Nazarite, you better put a limit on it. Did and that. But if you don't put a limit on it, then in their time, because, and just say you're going to make a vow, you got to do that the rest of your life. And if you make a vow to Nazarite, you can't even keep the pa Passover. Because you can't even drink wine or nothing that comes from the vine. Hebrews don't know that. That's why the Lord said, you better put a cap on them lips. Because they can get you in a heap of trouble. A heap of trouble, sisters and brothers. So the Lord, so the same spirit, sisters and brothers, you know, that the, uh, the Lord is, is dealt with in Israel, he's always dealt with. Let's go into Nehemiah, the ninth chapter. The same thing, because the Lord controls everything. He don't leave us to ourselves, because if he do, we're going to mess up every time. We have a bad problem. We don't listen well. And we got a bad memory. Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9. That's why, sisters and brothers, I tell people when you tell, uh, and, uh, uh, invite people here, tell them to come bring the uh, uh, pen, pad, and patience. Because we're going to do some book. I don't like talking too much. I've been listening to talking a long time. Nehemiah chapter 9. And verse 1, 9 and 1. Okay, go ahead. 
Now on the 24th day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloth and earth upon them. Now, you know, because uh, they had another thing. Israel was always going from one drummer to another. Now they fasting and they got sackcloth on and got dirt all over their head. Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. Then stood up upon the stairs of the Levites, Josh Joshua and Bani, Kadmiel, Shabaniah, Buni, Sherebiah, Bani, and Chanani, and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. So they cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. Israel is always doing that once they done messed up and is in trouble. Go ahead and read. Then the Levites, Joshua and Kadmiel. Uh, well, skip down to verse uh, uh, 7, brother, and go ahead. Verse 7, go ahead. Thou art the Lord, the God who didst choose Abram and brought us him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees uh -huh. and gave us him the name of Abraham. That's what they was crying to the Lord. Go ahead and read. And found his heart faithful before thee and made us a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Girgashites, to give it, I say, to his seed, and has performed thy words, for thou art righteous. He said, now, you, God, have chose our father Abram and changed his name to Abraham because made him a father of many nations. And you done gave us the land of all these Canaanites. Skip down to verse 16 and read it. But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearkened not, not, and hearken not to thy command. Didn't we read that? The Lord told them not to make no league with these people, but they got all proud and they got hard-headed and they did not obey God. That's right. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19, go ahead. Yet thou and thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness. Uh -huh. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night go to ahead. show them light uh -huh. and the way wherein that they should go. But still he didn't forsake us. Right. He stayed in the cloud, sister and brother. But go ahead and read. Thou gavest also thy good spirit uh -huh. to instruct them and withheld us not thy manner from their mouth, and gave us them water for their thirst. He said, you gave us them thy good spirit to instruct them. In other words, to teach them, show them what to do. Show them what the Lord wants them to know. He said, and you gave them water and you rained manna down. Because who is this good spirit, sisters and brothers? That same gave us. Holy Spirit, a holy angel. Because when he want to give a message, sisters and brothers, he sent this guy. This is what we don't understand. See, in the old days, we used to think that Gabriel, that God's messenger, was a righteous and upright man. Yeah, those are God's messengers, but not the messenger. I realized that when Samson, mother and father, was told by his angel that they was going to have Samson. And then they said, can we hold you up just enough to make a sacrifice to the Lord? He said, go ahead. They made the sacrifice to the Lord. Then the angel stepped off into the fire and went up with the sacrifice. Uh-uh, that ain't no man. <laughs> that got my attention then. Whoa, somebody have woefully mistaught me. That's right. Man can't do that. He stepped off into it. You get a match and put it on your finger and see what's going to happen. <laughs> then I realized that this messenger was an angel. And then I started looking for this angel. And every time he showed up and a name was called, it was the same. This same good spirit that he sent before him, he sent him to Daniel Stoop. So let's go into Daniel's the 8th chapter. And we're going to look, see who it was. Daniel's chapter 8. This is the way you learn the word of God, sister and brother, and find out what to do. Here a little and there a little. Line upon line and precept upon precept. That's how the Lord said he's going to speak to his people. He still said, but... Yet for all of that, a lot of them ain't going to hear. Nobody want to read the book. We got whatever we have on our mind. I had a lot of things when I first come into Israel, sister and brother. A whole lot of things I thought I came up later, found out it wasn't that way in a lot of them. A lot was good, but then a lot of them, it just wasn't that way. I had to roll with the book. And that's what you roll with, sister and brother. If you think that I say something contrary and you find it in the book that I say something contrary, roll with the book. Don't roll with boy. I ain't got no kingdom to put you in. No leg of fire. I'm struggling trying to keep myself in order. So I can't do nothing for you. 
How you doing, brother and sister? And keep walking. So he rolled with the book. Daniel's 8 and verse 1. 8 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, uh -huh. after that which appeared unto me at the first. Now this vision appeared, so Daniel wanted to know what it was. And the Lord going to send somebody to tell him. We're not concerned with the vision. That's another lesson. But who did he see? Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15. Skip down to verse 15. Now read it. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision uh -huh. and sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Now there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Go ahead and read. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli. Go ahead. Which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Wait a minute. This can't be the same Gabriel. You know the guy that went to John the Baptist's uh, father's house, the Zachariah's house? And he told Zechariah, I'm Gabriel that stands in, in the presence of God. Don't you know that's thousands of years apart? So this can, even though it called him the man, we know better, don't we? And said, Gabriel, cause this man to understand the vision. Go ahead and read. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid uh -huh. and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, understand, O son of man. For at the time of the end shall be the vision. So he gave him an end time vision, right. sisters and brothers, end time vision. Skip down and read verse 19. Verse 19 and go ahead. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. See, that's why we know what the end is going to be, sisters and brothers. We know what's going on. We know we got a crazy man here, but that don't make no difference. He had to come here to get Western Europe from dependent on America. It was like dependent children. We under the umbrella of American army. We under the umbrella of America's uh, goods. We gonna follow. They, that's why they call American president the most powerful man in the world. But all of a sudden, you got the ultimate intellect in the White House. <laughs> And everybody's running away. Even the, Fran even the president of France said, look, we got to get our armies together to protect us against Russia and America. That's what he said. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't nobody depending no more. Everybody's getting their house and all. But we know that that had to be before it happened because we know what's going on over there. Because the prophets told us about it, sister and brother. How did he tell us? He sent that angel and he sent it to his prophets and his apostles and they wrote it in a book. And now we read it. That's why I tell people all the time, you know, get preachers stand up and say, oh, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. First thing I said, how come I didn't hear? <laughs> what is left to prophesy? You understand? In our black history, we will take you from the color of Israel into the kingdom of God. I'm talking about the fathers. And it's all in the pages of this book. Didn't know how nothing have to speak to me. Ain't nothing ever have to spoke to me. Only thing I had to speak at night is remember my wife kicked me and said, stop snowing. Other than that, I ain't heard nothing. <laughs> so this same angel, this same angel was sent to Mary's house to tell her what was going on. It was actually it was sent to Joseph's house to talk to his wife Mary. Let's go and see. Nothing's changed. Let's go into Luke. The first chapter. That's why everybody tell me, well, brother boy, you know, the Lord has really blessed you. I said, I agree. He given you first vision. I said, I agree with that. How did you come up with this? I said, I read the book. Had to be something more than that. I said, what more is that? Everybody want to be special. Something come to me in the middle of the night. I said, brother boy. Ain't nothing came to me but this book. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody wants to, want, you know, everybody wants special attention. 
It's just like everybody telling me the Lord is my personal Savior. The Bible talks about com the common salvation. You understand? I got a train on my way to the kingdom. If you want to get there, you get on it. If you don't want to get there, then keep standing on the sideline. In other words, your salvation is in your hand. The only thing guys like me can do is point it out. It's up to you to investigate, prove it, and walk in it. I tell people all the time, read the book. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 26. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to start reading at verse 26. Luke 1 and 26. Okay, read it. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. You know, he's always sent, ain't he? Right. He is a servant spirit. We're going to show you that. The angel who? Gabriel, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He is the messenger. Go ahead and read. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph uh -huh. of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, let's look at this message. We ain't going to read it all, but just a little of it. Skip down to verse 30. Verse 30. And go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, uh -huh. for thou hast found favor with God. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, uh -huh. and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Now, the name come from heaven. That's right. A lot of brothers kick on Jay and Jesus and all that. I say, I speak English. I got faith in this God that calls himself the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I've always rolled with what's written. I say, I wasn't there when this was written. If something, if this is written wrong, then God is God. He know. But he told me in Isaiah 28 chapter, he said, with a stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to his people. I speak English. I read what's in England. This is what the angel brought down. This is the same name that was used in the prophets. I'm rolling with it. I think it's working, sisters and brothers. You know why I think it's working? Look at the Israel of God. We are not a local congregation. Right here is just the headquarters. We are all over the world. We got camps everywhere. In fact, people call me and so and so, brother, brother, who are you? I'm from your camp in Atlanta. Oh. You know, that used to be in, in Dallas. Oh. But before that, I was in Memphis. Oh, I didn't know that. Where all this come from? Not from me. I ain't no smarter than nobody else, sisters and brothers. But I just roll with the word of God. And when you roll with the word of God and believe in him, he blesses you. And I know it. So now, when the message was sent to Joseph's house, to Joseph's wife, the messenger was Gabriel, sisters and brothers. It was Gabriel. Even when the angels stayed at home and didn't leave heaven, sisters and brothers, they still the same, sisters and brothers. And even when Jesus got ready, he came and he taught on the earth, all the time he was here, no angel showed up to do nothing. But time he left, what did he do? He sent an angel back. Because he went back to doing his old thing, sisters and brothers. So while he was here, there was no angel in heaven here. He was still here. But now, when Jesus is done, according to what the prophet said, when the Messiah said, when Daniel said he's going to be cut off in the midst of the week, you understand? And when he got killed, and he rose and went on back to heaven, by the way, he's the only one that's going there. We ain't. He went back to his whole way of operating. Let's go and look at it. Let's go into John, the 14th chapter. I used to, you know, one thing I used to admit, I, I, I used to uh, do, though, when I first come into this thing, which was 47 years ago, ago, sister and brother. I used to wonder, how is it some of these brothers to determine what's good in this book and what's not good? <laughs> I used to wonder that. So I said, I'm going to take a foolish trip. I'm going to accept all of it. 
At the end of the day, I have an argument. When I stand before the Most High, he said, well, you shouldn't have read that old new book. You know, that's the devil's book. I can say, Lord, why did you let him put it there then? You told me that you're going to teach me. Why did you allow Satan to plant a book under the cover with yours? Y'all get my message? Maybe he didn't. Maybe he planted the book, planted the word in the mouth of the one that said that he planted the book. John 14, and we're going to start reading that verse 15. Because now, this is when Jesus is getting ready to go back to heaven. Look what he said. Verse 15. 15, go ahead. If you love me, keep my commandments. Boy, that's something that nobody ever pay attention to. But go ahead and read. And I will pray the Father. Uh-huh. And he shall give you another comfort. Uh-huh. That he may abide with you forever. I will pray the Father that he may give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Go ahead and read. Even the spirit of truth. Uh-huh. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Go ahead. Because it seeth him not. Uh -huh. Neither knoweth him. Uh -huh. But ye know him. Go ahead. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He said the world can't see him, but you know him. Because he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Right. Uh-oh, brother boy. In you? That mean his angel going to go inside of you? You know how that concept going up every time something in you show up is because of bad understanding? Because they look as God, at God as talking to the individual. He is not, not talking to the individual. He is talking to the group. Let me show you what he meant. He's going to be in you. Let's go in the Haggai, the second chapter. Haggai chapter 2. So everybody is an individual assistant, brother. And God only talked to them. That is a gross error. And we're going to show you what he meant when he said that. See, I don't miss things like that. I like to read things like that so we can show you how the Lord operates. I know you shouldn't have a time finding it. I can't ever find Haggai. <laughs> and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Haggai 2, Haggai the second chapter. And verse 1. Okay, go ahead. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, uh -huh. came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Go ahead. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, uh -huh. and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, uh -huh. and to the residue of the people, saying. Now look, this is when they went back and built the temple. So when they built that temple, the temple was so shabby until some of the old timers that saw it and remember Solomon's temple was crying. That's right. Some of them were shouting for joy that didn't know it. But when you've been around a long time and you look at what they built and compare it to, to what Solomon built, they started crying. So this ain't nothing but a chicken shack. That's, that's right. Go ahead and read. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? This is what the Lord is saying. Who is among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Uh-huh. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? So it's telling Zechariah, this building compared to Solomon's building is nothing. Right. But it's not the building and the magnificence of the building. It is where your mind is. Right. Go ahead and read. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel. Saith the Lord. Uh-huh. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. Go ahead. And be strong, all ye people of the land. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord. Go ahead. And work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. And work, because I'm with you. Go ahead and read. According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. Go ahead. So my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. So my spirit among, remain among you. Fear ye not. Right. So the spirit is not inside of you. It is among you. Like right here. You could be among us. Sitting right there. So when he said. He going to send his. The spirit of truth. He's going to be with you and be in you. He is not talking to an individual. He's talking to the whole group. Sister and brother. He going to be among you. 
But because the strangers, the non-Israelites taught this, we think some individual is going to go inside and going to take you over. They sure don't move it. Oh, I'm <laughs> possessed. If you're going to do that, then why you need this book? He going to be among you, sisters and brothers. And why is it that he's among us? Don't you know God was here for a minute among Israel? But he had to pull up. He said, look, I'm going to send the spirit to, to, to lead you. Let's go look at it. Let's see why he had to pull up. Let's go into Exodus, the 33rd chapter. We as a people have a whole lot that we had to pay, sisters and brothers. Because this is the time when uh, uh, Israel rebelled while Moses was in the mountain getting the Ten Commandments. And while he was in the mountain, they said, look here, we need to get us another leader because we don't know what to become of this Moses that brought us out of Egypt. And so he told Aaron, make us some gods. So Aaron said, give me the, the gold out of your ears. And they took that gold and they made a golden calf. And then turned around and said, these be the God, O Israel, that brought you out of Egypt. That let me know that anybody that can believe that, it ain't no problem for them believing this rot gut they got on the table that's called Roman Christianity. Everybody there knew that the gold in their ear the gold that they made that camp out of come out of their ear. But still, they praised to it. They set aside a high day to it. They sacrificed to it. God told Moses, get on down there. Them people that you brought out of Egypt, they have quickly corrupted themselves. So Moses, and when he got, and when he told, and Moses had to pray to the Lord to keep him from killing Israel. You understand? But let's go in the 33 and 1. And we're going to see what the Lord had to do after that. Exodus 33 and verse 1. Because he was really hot at Israel. First thing he said, I'm the Lord thy God. Have no other God before me. Making to you no graven images of anything in heaven and in earth. Soon as, before he could finish writing them, Israel had made them a graven image. And when he saw that, he was hot, sisters and brothers. I'm going to show you how hot he was. Verse 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. <coughs> so he made the promise so he had to keep it. So he said, Moses, you get on out there, them people that you brought out of Egypt. And take them on into the land that I swore unto your father I was going to give it to him. Go ahead and read. And I will send an angel before thee. I'm going to send an angel before you. And I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. We've been reading about that all That's afternoon, right. haven't we? This angel going to drive them out. Go ahead and read. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Uh-huh. For I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people. He said, I'm going to send this angel before you to drive these people out, and I'm sending you to a land Full of milk and honey, honey, but I will no, not go up in the middle of you because you are stiff-necked people. Go ahead and read. Lest I consume thee in the way. Lest I get hot and kill every one of you. That's right. See, sometimes we forget our history. We were so, God was so mad after that. He said, I can't stay here. I got to get from among you. If I don't, I'm going to kill every one of you. And so that's what happened. Go ahead and read. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned and no man did put on him his ornament. We always do that, don't we? Weep and mourn. And nobody put on his ornaments. Why didn't they put on their gold? People think that we just like gold in these last days. We always no. like gold and stuff. That's right. We, we always over g would <laughs> Ain't nothing changed. Go ahead and read. For the Lord has said unto, unto Moses... Say unto the children of Israel, you are stiff-necked people. Uh -huh. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment uh -huh. and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee that I may know what to do unto thee. He said, you better take that gold off you. 
Because when I look at it, I'm going to think about that calf and I'll kill every one of it. Take it off. Go ahead and read. So they took it off. Go ahead. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. Uh huh. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, uh -huh. afar from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. Because the Lord was actually among Israel. Sister and brother, we have other lessons to show you he was actually here. And every time he got ready for Israel to uh, move, you see that cloud or either that pillar of fire would move and Israel would know and go and take down the tabernacle of the congregation. And every time he got ready for them to plant, the cloud would stop and then they would set it all up again. And every time anybody wanted a message, they'd go, especially when Moses go, that cloud would come down and Moses would commune with God. But God said, I ain't doing this no more because I'm going to kill every one of you. I ain't going to go up among you. So if you want to do it, you got to come way out away from the camp system, brother. That's the way the Lord operated. So he operated through the angel. So I'm going to send this angel before you. He's going to take you into the land. He's going to do this. Obey him. Don't vex him because he will not forgive your, your, your sin. So now, when Jesus came in the flesh, no angel was here, sisters and brothers. But after he left back, he went back to his same old mode of operation. This is what people don't understand. God don't change, ever. Whatever he did yesterday, he's going to do it today and tomorrow. So let's see what happened when Jesus got ready to go back to heaven. Because that's where he came from. Let's go in the eyes of the 16th chapter. People say all the time, well, you know, I hear them say, you know, more than one God say, the Bible talk about one God. Go read Isaiah. Say, I'm God and there's no other. I said, who is that that God talking to you when he said, let us make man in our own image? Let us do this. Let us do that. Is he a schizophrenic? He couldn't have been talking to the angel because you got angels out there with four faces. Six wings and calf feet. You see anybody walking around here? If it made in his image, don't you think somebody would have four faces and calf feet with wings? At least one. But it's not there, sisters and brothers. People don't understand a lot of time. A lot of time you read the book and the angel said, thus said the Lord. He's telling you where he got the message from. John 16. And we're going to start reading because we're going to Learn a few things on the way to learning something, sister and brother, because there's a whole lot of mess that's got to be straightened out that's called the word of God. Whole lot of it. And we're going to do it. We are doing it. The Lord is blessing us to doing it. That's why the world is listening. That's why when the Lord had Solomon, Solomon's wisdom was the wisdom of the, of the Lord. Didn't the Bible tell you that men came from all nations under the sun to hear Solomon's wisdom? What wisdom was it? This book, sisters and brothers. The word. And I know it's true because it's happening to us. I am not boasting. I am merely stating the fact. It's all that simple. St. John 16, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. Psalm 16 and 5. Okay, go ahead. But now I go my way to him that sent me. Uh -huh. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? He said, now I go my way to him that sent me. And nobody asked me where I'm going. That's because they don't want to know. But look what he said. Go ahead and read. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow uh -huh. hath filled your heart. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. Uh -huh. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He said, look, you're all sad because I say I'm going to leave. But I'm telling you, I got to go my way. Because if I don't go, the comforter will not come to you. And I will go and I will send him to you. Because he's the one that's doing the sin. And remember the protocol, the father, the one that became the son, and the angel that he sent. He's the one that the Lord used to comfort you, sisters and brothers. He's the one that he sent. Verse 8, go ahead and read. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin uh -huh. and of righteousness and of judgment. And he will do that. And he's doing it already through his word, sisters and brothers. Look at the word. Whole creation think that they're going to heaven. 
You can't find that written one time in this Bible. Not one. I won't put the burden on you to twice where it says the Lord is going to take man to heaven. Not one time. But brother boy, he said that uh, when Jesus comes, we're going to meet him in the air. I said, yeah, you know what meet me? The book said he left from where he is and you left from where you was and you all met and then everybody came back here. Zechariah the 14th chapter told you that before John wrote it. In Thessalonians. That's why Peter said we have a most sure word of prophecy. Go back and read it. So look. He said when he come, he's going to reprove the world. He is because the world is backwards. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. I have yet many things to say unto you. He said, I have many things to say unto you. But you cannot bear them now. That's why I tell brothers all the time, you get somebody just coming to word, you want to call them and teach them the whole book in one day. <laughs> you can't do that. You're going you're gonna to burn them out. And even Jesus said, I got a lot of things I want to say to you. But I'm going to say them to you like I said before I came in the flesh. This guy is going to show it to you. Go ahead and read. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Uh -huh. But he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He said now, so when the spirit of truth come, he going to guide you into all truth. That's why I tell people all the time, you get all these people that's full of the Holy Ghost. You know the one that's going to be in church tomorrow? But still, they don't even know that Sunday is not the Lord's Sabbath day. They get up, Easter that's coming up, going to tell you that the Lord died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. The Lord said that he is going to be in the grave for three days and three nights. And then Daniel's tell you that he's going to be cut off in the middle of the week. All you have to do is go to the middle of the week. You go to the middle of the week, then that lets you know he was cut off on the Wednesday. He was in the grave Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. He was in there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and he rose on the Sabbath day just before sundown. That's why the book tell you in John, the 20th chapter, when the woman got to the sepulcher, while it was yet dark, he was gone. Why did he rise on the Sabbath day? Because God gave man seven days. After the seventh day, sisters and brothers, that the Lord is talking about, ain't going to be no more man. But we haven't gotten to that yet. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have to come to that. So he said, look. When the spirit of truth come, he's going to lead you and guide you in all truth. And he's going to show you all the things I want you to have. What verse are we? We have 14. Uh-huh. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He's not going to speak his own words. Remember we read in Exodus 23rd chapter? Mm -hmm. Say, obey his voice and do all that I say. That's right. Remember we read when the angel in the bush was there and said, but the Lord spoke to Moses. Why? Because the words of the Lord, he's not going to speak of himself. He's going to speak only what I tell you. Go ahead and read. All things that the Father hath are mine. Oh, so where did Jesus get it from? He got it from the Father. All things that the Father have are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Oh, so now the Father going to give it to Jesus. Jesus going to give it to this angel. And the angel is going to bring it to Israel. And then Israel is going to go and bring it to all the sons of Adam. Some of my Hebrew brothers don't realize that yet, but in time they will. We patient. 